So at this point, it probably sounds like a broken record, but we all know that the iPad Pro is leaps and bounds or has been leaps and bounds ahead of the competition from a harder perspective, both externally and internally, dating back to the 2018 when they reconstructed the iPad Pro from the ground up and gave us that beautiful industrial design. And then even now with the M4 iPad Pro with the bleeding edge of being 5.1 millimeters thin, also with the tandem OLED, the ProMotion, the quad speakers, the camera on the rear, and then even internally with the M4 chip, everything from a harder perspective is top of the line and bleeding edge when it comes to tablets and computers at the end of the day. I mean, the M4 chip is in the Mac Mini, the M4 chip is in the MacBook Air, and those run Mac OS and they run it exceptionally well. So at this point, it should be easy for Mac OS to be able to be run on the iPad Pro. And all these leaks and rumors about iPad OS 19 bringing some sort of pro level feature, whether it is some sort of kind of elevated stage manager or a Mac OS Lite, or again, pro level kind of experiences on the iPad Pro to help it distinguish itself from the iPad Air to the iPad Pro is something that we've been yearning for for a long time, including myself. So in this video, what I wanna do is talk about the state of Mac OS on the iPad Pro, show you guys my way around it, how you can actually get something like that. Again, it's not gonna be Mac OS running natively on here, but I'll show you guys exactly how to do that, and then we'll talk about what Mac OS on the iPad Pro could mean moving forward. So, let's get into it. So before we get into how I run Mac OS on the iPad Pro, I do wanna mention how I use Mac OS to coincide with iPad OS and my iPad Pro, because I've mentioned for years now that my iPad Pro has either been my only computer or my main computer since 2018. So it's been almost seven years at this point that I've been using it as my main computer and using it happily. Now, of course, getting from point A to point B can be done on both Mac OS and iPad OS, but the way you get to point B on iPad OS sometimes is more of a roller coaster ride as opposed to just a linear path. And again, sometimes it can be a little bit more tedious, a little bit more frictionful instead of frictionless. But at the end of the day, I enjoy using the iPad Pro so much that I'm willing to deal with those shortcomings and those sacrifices. The versatility of the iPad Pro, going from tablet to laptop to note-taking machine to content consumption machine to portable powerhouse, using the Apple Pencil, using the Magic Keyboard, there's really nothing quite like the iPad Pro. And then you have the abundance of iOS and iPadOS apps, which is completely unmatched because basically, any app that you can think of in your head has probably already been created and already working correctly and working well on iOS and iPadOS. So the App Store just has millions of options for you when it comes to using your iPad as a pro level machine, but also using it as a throw around content consumption machine. And then in terms of my flow, everything is done on the iPad for the most part, but there is kind of that 5% of my tasks that I prefer to use Mac OS for, right? As of the way that I have it right now, I have a entry level Mac mini. And for the most part, I do all the intensive work on my iPad Pro. I film on my iPhone, I edit everything on my iPad Pro, I make my thumbnails on my iPad Pro, I export it onto an external SSD that's always connected to my iPad Pro, and everything's just done on there from a flow perspective. But when it comes to something maybe to like an uploading a video or maybe going to a, a web application that doesn't run perfectly on the iPad Pro, that's when I kind of move over to Mac OS because things are just optimized a little bit better over there and they're not fully optimized for the iPad Pro and iPad OS. Even though we have desktop class browsing on the iPad Pro with Safari as well as Chrome, some of these applications and some of these, especially websites, are still kind of confused that you are using an iPad OS machine or maybe it thinks you're using an iOS machine, but it's trying to give you the experience of a Mac OS machine. So that experience sometimes can be a little bit broken, a little bit delayed, and it causes a lot of latency and some friction at the end of the day. So the way that it currently stands, the best way to run, I guess, Mac OS on the iPad Pro is using some sort of remote desktop solution. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna walk you guys through how to set up the remote desktop, which is an application that's completely free. And if you have a working and modern Mac OS device, whether it is a laptop, a Mac mini, or whatever the case is that's consistently connected to the internet, remoting in from your iPad Pro is extremely easy and then you're able to run basically Mac OS on your iPad with no problems whatsoever. So let's hop over to the screen recording and let me show you how to get this done. So this is again a lot simpler than even I anticipated and I've been using this flow for about a month now at this point and it's very easy to do. All you're going to do is download remote desktop, no affiliation with them whatsoever, it's just something that's highly rated and very easy to use and you download it on your iPad Pro. You tap into the remote desktop and then you can see that we are already having connected the Mac mini, but we're gonna actually go through the process of connecting it together so we know exactly what that looks like. So let's delete it for now and then we'll go from there. So as you can see here, when you do open up the remote desktop, the first thing you're gonna notice is this new prompt right here, which lets you know like, hey, go to jumpdesktop.com go, 
download the application on your Mac computer, and then from there, it'll show up on here. So once you have to download it on your Mac OS machine, and then you also have it downloaded on your iPad Pro, each time it's gonna ask you to create an account. So you create an account, sign in with your Gmail, which is exactly what I did on the iPad version of it. And then what you're gonna wanna do on the Mac version is give access to that email or to that Gmail account. It could be any email whatsoever. And then once that happens, then your icon will pop up here on the left. So you can see here that I have my Mac mini and it says fluid remote desktop. And all you have to do here is tap into it. You're gonna type in your normal credentials, which is a password that you use to sign into your regular login. We'll press okay. It's gonna connect. You give it a second. And then voila, we are running Mac OS virtually using that remote desktop or the junk desktop from my Mac mini. And it works extremely well. There's a little bit of latency here and there, so I wouldn't be gaming on here by any means, but for any work tasks, for typing, for surfing the web, for managing your files, for uploading stuff, it works absolutely amazingly. So if you wanna pull something up right here, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually go into the settings and make sure that you have everything turned on the way you want to. So gesture profile, I keep it as standard. Change resolution, I like to turn on the retina resolution to get it a little bit more crispy. And you'll notice that it does crisp up nicely. And there it goes. And then also you have the ability to show your pointer, show your circle, and also have the mini keyboard button. But what I like about this is that everything works natively as if it's on your iPad. So any sound comes out of the iPad speakers. The ability to right click, you're now right clicking on the actual jump desktop and inside of Mac OS. When it comes to typing, same thing goes. So if I open up the notes application, open up a new note here, I go in here, start typing, hey, hello, how are you? So everything works as if it's a native machine on the iPad Pro, and it's very cool and very awesome to see, and it gives you a little bit of a foreshadow as to what the possibilities are with Mac OS on the iPad, because Mac OS can definitely run natively on the iPad Pro from a sheer power perspective. I mean, I have 16 gigs of RAM here, I have the M4 chip, so there's no reason why it shouldn't. And then if you open up a new window, let's right click on here. Let's open up a new personal window. Let's go into YouTube. Let's play something random. Let's see if it loads up. Give it a second. And maybe let's see what Technically T is up to. As you can see, it is playing. The speakers are playing from the iPad itself and it's not remoting from the Mac mini speakers or from the desktop situation that I have over here. And what I like about it is that you can remotely access this from anywhere. And you can remotely access it as long as the Mac mini or whatever you're remoting into is connected to the internet and has power. So it can be in sleep mode and it can still power itself on because you are remotely accessing it, which is an amazing thing to see. And then one last cool thing I wanted to show off is that since this is an iPad app technically, it's being read as an iPad app by the iPad. So if I swipe down to my control center, I can actually hit stage manager and have a floating window version of this. So if I click on here, let's say if I want to make this a little bit smaller, I can do that. Now again, it's going to try to adjust itself a little bit to be able to fit the screen. But if I minimize this, minimize this, it still kind of conforms itself a little bit. Obviously, you're going to want to move around to get everything in view, but it does make everything smaller. It makes everything visible. And if I want to open up something like my home application or maybe the photos app or again, maybe even the files application, you'll be able to do that very easily. And then you're still in here and you just tap in and then all of a sudden you're using Mac OS like you would natively on the iPad Pro. One thing to note here is that you can't like drag and drop files in between them. There's things like universal control if you want to do that. But again, I just use my iCloud a lot of the time. So if whatever I save on my desktop will also be accessible on my iPad Pro and vice versa. So that is good to know. So when it comes to interacting between applications and iPad OS into the remote desktop, that won't work. But when it comes to utilizing the hardware of the iPad, the jump desktop and remote desktop situation will be able to handle and use the hardware like the trackpad, like the keyboard, like being able to have your shortcuts, like using the speakers, and that's great to see. And then in terms of how it works with a pencil, if I grab my pencil here, the pencil then just acts as a mouse. So you can grab something right here, highlight it. Again, there's a tad bit of latency, but it isn't anything crazy, especially if you're just doing some quick work that kind of gets you that last 5% to be able to complete your workflow. So that is going to be how I'm using Mac OS on my iPad Pro from time to time. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. Let me know what you think. Is this something that you would get into? Would you want to use Jump Desktop or use a remote desktop solution on your iPad Pro for those small, minimal tasks? 
Can you get some real work done, quote unquote? I know people are gonna say, oh, it doesn't work as well as it should if it works, if it runs natively. And yeah, of course it's not gonna work one-to-one, -one, but at the end of the day, if you have a decent Wi-Fi connection, or you, even if you're hardwired in, like my co-host Jeff Benjamin is, then it's gonna be lightning fast and a zero to little latency when you are using it that way. Again, I'm not gonna be using games, I'm not gonna be playing on 120 FPS or anything like that, but for uploading videos, for managing my YouTube channel through the Safari on Mac OS is a lot easier than just remote in, work on it there, and then remote out and go back to iPad OS to get my real work done. But that'll do for this video, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you wanna watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.